Hello everyone, I want to do a really short video just to show you my test arena that I built for testing out ant weight and beetle weight robots. In this video, I'm going to cover just kind of the basics of what I did, how much it costs, and why you might want to build your own. So let's start looking at the test arena. So first things first, what is a test arena and why should you care? Well, even at the small weight classes like an ant weight or a beetle weight, one pound and three pound respectively combat robots, they can be extremely dangerous. Even a well-built and well-designed one pound robot can cause you serious injury. I didn't really realize this when I first got into building combat robots and when I built the very first version of um, Sergeant Cuddles, I drove it around in my garage, hit something and very quickly embedded it into the ceiling in my garage, almost taking out a couple of my shop lights. And I realized that having a test arena or a better method to test things was a good idea. And just recently I decided to build a test arena because I'm building a really brutal beetle weight and I don't want to test that even outside. I want to test it in a nice, secure location. So I end up building this little arena. So safety first, if you're building a combat robot, even a one or a three pounder, it is a good idea to test it in a controlled environment. A test box is a really good idea. I guess the second best idea is to test it way outside, you know, use a zoom lens, test it from far away. Um, but things can go flying for a very long distance. Um, even when I was testing my beetle weight kamikaze, it started kind of going like this, hit the ground, and there's still parts I'm not finding today on my property. So test arena is a good idea for that. So let me just kind of show you around, show you the dimensions and show you how I put one of these together. Let's talk overall dimension. This arena is a little bit large. It is four feet by four feet by two foot tall. And I chose that dimension for a few different reasons. Uh, the first of which is a local Home Depot or Lowe's. You can get these MDF panels in a four by two sheet. So you don't have to do really that much cutting and it fits in the back of a car relatively easy. So at the end of the day, it's one, two, three, four four by two sections, and then the floor is composed of two four by two sections as well. So it's actually a really simple thing to put together because it's really just four pieces of MDF and then another two thinner pieces at the bottom. These walls are three quarter inch thick and the floor is an eighth inch thick. And I'll go into this in a little bit more detail, but the floor is designed so that you can just lift up this whole thing, slide out the floor sections and put new sections in. I specifically designed it so that the floor is the easiest thing to replace and also really inexpensive. I think the whole floor on this only costs about $15 or something like that. One of these four by two sections is somewhere in the neighborhood of seven or eight dollars a piece. So $15 gets you a new floor and then you can also get these pieces, the eighth inch thick four by two sections, you can also get this in like the slick gloss melamine finish which is nice for testing out traction of different wheels. Here's a little bit better look at the inside of the arena. You can see I have this cross brace here. I think this is a one by four, just pine or poplar. And I just have two screws that I uh, pre-drilled and screwed into the side. And it's pretty stable. It's just here to hold up the um, Lexan panels that sit. If you're using more than one Lexan panel or more than two, you could do another cross brace like that. You can also see that down here at the bottom, I have this two inch piece of steel. I've cut these uh, pieces of steel. These are really easy to find at Home Depot or Lowe's in just the metal section near the hardware. And I have these in here just to basically protect the bottom corner against hits because that's where a lot of wear is going to happen from, you know, spinning weapons. If I slam into the corner, that's where all the wear is going to happen. So I just have those to protect the MDF a lot more. And um, other than that, if you look at the floor here on the bottom, you can see that the seam runs down the middle. What I did for the floor panels is I put them on the flattest part on my concrete floor, ran a piece of Gorilla Tape down the middle, and then just flip the whole thing upside down. So that seam is actually taped together and there's really not much of a seam. So it's really nice and smooth to drive around on. And you can see I've got some <laughs> tire marks on here from testing out some drive. The neat thing I like about this floor is you could paint one side and then leave the other side bare and then flip it around to test kind of different driving conditions. Some arenas use like a wood floor, other arenas use like a steel floor. So as I said earlier, you could get some of that white melamine, which is really slippery and probably closer to what like a steel floor would be like 
And since this floor is so inexpensive, you could very easily and quickly swap out different floors to test out different drive. And because this arena is four foot by four foot, it's big enough that you can kind of test driving around in a little bit. The entire structure of this test box is being held together with eight of these, um, I think they're Simpson strong tie brackets. I think the model is D111442. I'll have a link to these down in the description. You can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's, of course. And I just have one at the bottom and one at the top. And you might notice that there is a lip on the top, and this lip is for holding the Lexan in place. There's just a slight bit of a lip so it can't slip over the top. And at the bottom, you might be able to see, I'll lift this up, you can see that there is a lip at the bottom, and so this whole box actually just sits on top of the floor. So all I have to do to replace the floor is just lift this up, slide the floor panels out, slide a new one, and drop it down on top. So I don't really have to worry about attaching anything in terms of the floor, it's just kind of resting on top of it, and these pieces just kind of hold it in place. So it's a really simple design, I'm just running this in with some standard wood screws, so nice and simple. For the top of the enclosure, I'm using these two pieces of quarter-inch Lexan, and they just kind of sit on top like that, and they fit into the little corners so it can't go anywhere that way. And then I have another one, and this one just fits right on the other side, just like that. There we go. So that's how the top is held in. I don't really have any method to hold this in place right now. If something was to fly up and hit it, you know, it might shift the panel off a little bit. I'm not too concerned about that, but you could just simply tape this down right here at the joint. I think eventually I'm going to maybe run a couple screws down this center bar and maybe um, add one of these braces that comes over top of it like that. But I'm really not too concerned about the top right now because I don't have a lot flying up into it. But I do recommend about a quarter inch Lexan for the top. I have seen some people do eighth inch, but you're gonna wanna use Lexan and not acrylic. Lexan is polycarbonate or bulletproof glass is a lot of times what it's called. And this is gonna withstand impacts. If you use acrylic, it will just shatter and go all over the place. So definitely use polycarbonate or Lexan for the top. In terms of cost, this whole test box cost me about $250. 120 of that is just the Lexan on top. And the Lexan is going to be a large portion of it. Now, I could have easily covered half of this and only left, you know, one half open uh, for viewing. I could have also built the whole top completely enclosed and just done one side, you know, so that you view straight in. I could have also made this a lot shorter, things like that. There's a lot of different ways that you can build this to cut the cost, or you could make this, you know, four times as big and spend a lot more money. But in my case, the Lexan was probably the majority of the single expense. These little corner brackets are about two, 250 a piece. So when you have eight of them, you know, that adds up to 20, 30 bucks, something like that. And then each one of the MDF panels, I wanna say was in the range of 15 to $20. So it definitely adds up just because there's a lot of material here. And I also have the metal stripping on the inside. I, of course, highly encourage you to look for surplus, look for salvage. I know a lot of people have found local plastic suppliers that do cutoffs from large Lexane panels, and you could easily run another cross brace down the middle and do four smaller panels, and that would be just fine. But just keep in mind that the Lexane panels will cost you some money. Don't cheap out and get acrylic. There's really no point in doing that. You're gonna you know, pretty much nullify the whole safety concept of doing something like this. In addition to the actual test box, I also have this little motor weapon testing rig that I've put together. It consists of a thick piece of MDF. I think this is also three quarter of an inch. And on the bottom, it has these nice little rubber bumpers in the corner. And then I have these T-nuts that run through the bottom and they attach into this piece of acrylic up top. This piece of acrylic has a couple holes through it for running wires down into it. And it also has several different mounting plates or mounting patterns on the bottom of it for mounting various types of brushless motors or other types of motors. And then I have um, all my wire connections down here, nice and zip tied out of place. 
a wire channel that routes the wires away, and they have this really thick and beefy three conductor wire. It's actually a power cord uh, that I have, and this is like 10 or 15 feet. I can run this outside the test box, and they have nice little quick disconnects at the other side that I can attach various ESCs. So I've used this numerous times. You've probably seen this in a couple of my videos previously, and it's really good for swapping out a motor, swapping out the weapon, and also swapping out the ESC on the battery so I can test various different combos. And it's really nice to confidently be able to spin up a weapon such as this inside the test arena with the wires and all the electronics safely away from the whole thing on a nice stable platform that's not going to shift around a lot. There wouldn't be much point to this arena if we weren't going to spin up something really dangerous inside. So the only thing I have right now is the test weapon setup for my beetle weight, my upcoming beetle weight anxiety attack. This is a 12 and a half inch long bar of S7 attached to a eh, roughly 900 watt motor. And it's all nicely safely attached. This thing gets up to about 6,000 RPM and produces about 2,000 joules worth of energy. So it packs quite quite a punch. So let's put the Lexan on, zoom in the camera, and do a spin-up of this weapon, nice and safely. Okay, so I've got everything secured. I've got the Lexan on top. Let's see this thing spin up. So that is about maybe 20%. I'm going to go ahead and stand back and run this up to 100%. The other nice thing about this arena is it actually um, keeps a lot of the sound inside. So I'm going to take off my lapel mic, put that inside, and give you a little bit better idea of what it sounds like inside the test box. One final quick note about the design for this little test arena. This is simply a safety test arena and this should not be confused with a full competition arena. Competition arenas need a lot more metal, a lot more Lexan, and a lot more bracing. This is simply just for testing. You could probably get away fighting maybe a couple plastic ants, maybe a couple ant weights in here, but I would not really be too thrilled with fighting beetle weights in this arena and being anywhere in the vicinity. This is simply just a testing arena, and if you want to build a competition arena, there are several other tutorials out there. Uh, maybe check out Spark Tools. I'll have a link down below. If you're looking to build a competition arena, this is not it. So that's about all I have for this video. There's always a lot of discussions about motor types and battery types and weapon designs, but there's not always a lot of discussion about proper safety procedures. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of what's involved in building your own safety test box. And it is a really nice tool to have in your arsenal for developing better robots, better drive, better weapons, things like that. So as always, you can check me out on my Facebook page for channel updates and whatnot. I will be hopefully doing more of these um, kind of entry level uh, uh, how-to tutorials focused around combat robots, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.